Hello, I'm Sandy Doherty, Sandy D Bakes. I was on the Great British Bake Off 2015, 2017. Um, I've done lots and lots of work with charities, fair trade, um, often appear on radio leads, can be heard on radio leads, um, work with the Bronte Society, but today I'm here working with fair trade and working with JTS which is our wholesalers for fair trade products. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to make a beautiful three course meal with lots of variations for you to do. <laughs> now, I want you to look at the products that we've got today. JTS very kindly sent me some of their products for us to try and I'm going to try them on your behalf. Now, JTS work with fair trade organisations across the world, especially in India, where they've just launched these new products. Chickpeas, organic fair trade chickpeas, lentils, red lentils and to dal, or for us from Yorkshire, yellow split peas. So, also we've got some beautiful pickles, they do a gorgeous range of pickles, some Maru pasta sauces, coconut milk, brown rice. The brown rice comes in lots of different size bags, even if you wanted a sack to share. Um, beer bread, so we're going to be making this so that you can see you just add your own kind of beer. So I found a good Yorkshire beer to add for that. And other pasta sauces. I've also uh, been given some products that are also fair trade. So divine cocoa here, and then the Tony's chocolate. This is absolutely gorgeous stuff, and I was sent three bars, and there are only two left. So that's how lovely it was. And the bar I wanted today was the one that got eaten. Never mind. So what we're going to do today? Let me just let me just give you an idea. Is a fabulous starter with chicken, which is also wrapped with Malawi gold chilli sauce and then fried. Served with a apple and celery salsa. Gorgeous, with a bit of red vinegar, red wine vinegar in it. Beautiful little starter. Main course, we're going on to do that simple thing, but often people shy away from it, pastry. And I'm going to make a short crust pastry with the addition of one of the chili, the curry paste. Or, you never know, might use the chili pesto. Once again, choice is yours, nothing stands still. We're going to fill it with a gorgeous mixture of um, egg custard with the addition of some of the tomato and basil sauce, topped with smoked haddock gorgeous serve with a green salad. We're then going to go on to make an ice cream and the ice cream is going to be the coconut milk, some condensed milk and also some of the gorgeous pineapple jam. We've also got a little addition of some cabbage. That makes it very grown up. Now with that we're using the chickpeas and we're going to grind the chickpeas down with a processor you do need a processor, you can't do this in any other way because that's the little hard babies of these things. And we're going to make chickpea flour and this is going to make the most gorgeous, sumptuous, rich, chocolatey brownie to serve with the ice cream or the ice cream to serve with the brownie. Whichever you prefer, you can make the most of. Once again, what I want to say is what I bring you has been specially created so that you can do whatever you choose if, if you're if you're vegetarian you don't want to eat the fish don't put fish in put, put mushrooms in it really is up to you making the pastry use use a vegetable fat it really doesn't matter as long as that you're having a go and you're taking the rough ideas of what I'm gonna bring you and making it into your own thing so I'm going to clear the table down, I'm going to get the first recipe ready, which is going to be the ice cream because we need that in the freezer, and then I'm going to come back 
make the pastry, get that in the fridge to chill. And we're gonna go mix around and we're gonna make the brownie. Okay, see you in a minute. Right, that's gonna make this, I'm gonna make this ice cream. This ice cream is the easiest you will ever, ever make. Very, very easy. And basically, it's condensed milk. Yeah, I've just used, we've got regular condensed milk. I'm actually then going to use some of the coconut milk from JTS. And we're gonna add this in to the condensed milk. Comes out really easy, as you can see. No. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Basically, that's your two ingredients. If you didn't want to use if you didn't want to use the coconut milk, you can use double cream. Doing that as well. You can use coconut cream if you want. I've just kept it that wee bit lighter. Now, what we're going to add to this is a jar. Basically, yes, a whole jar, but it make it nice of fair trade pineapple jam I thought so this opens really nicely I'll, I'll do it the old-fashioned way there we go can't use the jar again but it opens yeah let's add the pineapple jam it's absolutely delicious this jam because it doesn't have a firm set which kind of means that there's a lot more fruit than sugar. Oh, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to tell you the smell. Do you know, it, imagine a sun-kissed island and your toes are dangling in a little cool lagoon where the water's just running off the rocks and there's a palm tree over your head wafting away and somebody produces the most gorgeous drink and it has the most beautiful, fresh perfume of pineapple. That is this jar of jam right now. There you go. I'm gonna write books next. I'm just going to lightly whisk this in. Okay, so we've got it nicely combined get rid of the whisk and now because we're on that tropical island we're going to add a little bit of white rum now always taste what you're doing <coughs> anyway We'll just add some in. I, I've drunk out of that now, I've got to put that down, haven't I? So, not a lot because alcohol doesn't set. Now what we've got to do here with this is pour it into a container. Okay, so it's in the freezer container. This needs to go in, Make the, it needs a good four, four hours overnight, whatever. Um, as long as you possibly can. Uh, so this will go in the freezer then and then this will be ready for dinner later. Hi, now we're going to make the brownie. This brownie is extra special because it's made with chickpea flour which I've used the JTS chickpeas to grind to make the, into the flour. So just a point about the chickpea flour, it's a very fine golden kind of mixture. And you do need equipment to use it. There's, there's no point saying you can just do it with a pestle and mortar. You'd be there for days. So you can either use the big Magimix or a big Kenwood kind of processor or the hand blender, which I've, I've used here. Now, when you do it, you've to, you've to keep going for about three or four minutes and it's quite noisy, but you should just keep letting it spin and spin and spin. Then you sieve it and then you can use a coffee grinder to take it down to even a smoother powder. Now with the brownie, I'm using white chocolate, fair trade white chocolate and raspberries, fresh raspberries. But the combination is up to you. you can use um, I've used a dark brown sugar to give that real malty 
caramel flavour to your brownie. We've got some butter and some um, dark chocolate melting in a dish in the microwave. We've got the chickpea flour weighed out here. The recipe will be available, so I won't give you the instructions just yet. We add, we're adding four tablespoons of divine cocoa powder. Once again, divine is a fair trade ingredient and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now look at this girl. Because we're talking brownie, we're talking rich, decadent cocoa. So that's four tablespoons of cocoa powder in with your chickpea flour. In the dish here, I've got the sugar and the eggs. And basically, after a couple of mixings, it all goes in together and a greased deep tin here to pour it into. So, I'm gonna whisk these till they're thick and foamy. I'll just be a minute. Now, with the brownie, we whip the sugar and the eggs till they're creamy and foamy. That's a lovely mixture. And the darker the um, sugar, the more sort of malty it's going to be. Now into there, we're going to pour in melted fair grade, fair trade chocolate and butter. Now this folds in, so we're mixing the chocolate and the butter into the sugar and the eggs. That's right, just get it nicely combined till it starts to turn a really rich chocolate colour. So we fold this in, then we go over to the chickpea flour and the cocoa and this tips in as well, just tip it in, that's right, mix that in and we just gently fold this in too. Now this is combining nicely and just on the last few turns I'm going to tip in my white chocolate chips, either white chocolate or chopped white chocolate. And this stirs through. Oh, I think I could really eat this by the spoonful now, looking at this. Okay, and then in goes the fresh raspberries. You can use freeze-dried raspberries, they actually have a really intense flavour, the freeze-dried raspberries and fresh ones are nice if you are making it for a dessert because you get that pocket of, of, uh, of the juicy fruit. Now that's combined and then from there we'll take a lined tin, make sure your tin's lined um, because it's a bit of a nightmare to get out if you don't tip it in you can pile it pile it up and you think that there's no room for the brownie in the tin that you've chosen spread this out scrape the spoon and when you've finished using the spoon in your dish let the spoon out uh -huh. That's just heaven. We're going to bake this now for about 20 minutes. So pop this in 20 25 minutes until it's just crispy on the top but not baked right through. You want that soft middle and go slightly under rather than over. Right, now, pastry. Please don't be frightened by pastry. Pastry is one of the easiest things to make if you just follow a few simple tips. Now, the simple tips are, I was always taught, and my mum always taught me, that no matter what pastry you're making, use self-raising flour. Unless it's a specific, specialist, patisserie kind of pastry. But self-raising flour, it gives you short crust pastry that little bit of lightness, which and then makes it a little bit crumblier and a much more desirable slice to cut. So in the bowl here, I've got 250 grams of self-raising flour. 
Into that, I'm going to add a pinch of salt, which just got to leave you for a minute because it's over here on the wall. Pinch of salt, okay, and then your fat, half fat to flour, okay. So I've got here now. This is where variations happen. I've got here block margarine, which I'm just going to chop into it, and also. I've got lard now this may people may go oh my days lard but the amount you use is is minimal um, you could if you really didn't want to use the lard use a white vegetable fat or you could use all margarine but the perfect combination is block margarine and a white fat of some description as always rub it in using your fingertips if you just want to know how you are give your bowl a little shake and all the the big lumps rise to the top and you can just rub it again no other ingredients and the ingredients we're going to use is we're going to use the hot chili pesto from JTS provided and I'm going to add a couple of really good heaped teaspoons maybe two maybe three that's it that'll be enough we don't, we don't just remember pastry pastry is a carrier for for other ingredients so it plays a part in your recipe but it doesn't have to be all of your recipe that's the whole thing about pastry pies and everything it's the layers of flavor that you're actually achieving not this overpowering of one flavour. So we've added that. I'm just going to mix this in. If you're not so keen on, on the chilli side of things, you could, you could add a couple of teaspoons of green pesto. You could just add some chopped herbs. Now we need to add just a couple of spoonfuls of water. What, when it says add some water, I can't say add two teaspoons, add one teaspoon, add three. You're gonna to have to just work with me on this one because pastry, like a lot of things with flour, it's very, it's very based on the environment. It, it, it's very touchy to heat, to moisture, to dry, to cold, to damp. So it always acts a little bit different depending on the atmosphere. It's all get very scientific and I don't want to get too scientific, but. Now, I've just taken that round with a knife, so if you can see there, that's where we're up to, okay? It doesn't look like much at the moment. So I'm just going to go in with my hand and start to work it through. Normally, if I was making this pastry without the addition of the, of the pesto, I'd just bring it together as quickly as I could with my hand. But because we need to just combine that pesto mixture right through the pastry, I'm just kneading it a little bit more than I would. However, I'm doing that very swiftly and quickly. And there we have our pastry. So we've got this rippled reddish orange pastry. Now I'm not going to faff faff there's a Yorkshire word for you I'm not going to faff with this any more than I need to I'm just going to put that onto a plate and chill it and then it chill down because by chilling what happens there it doesn't shrink as much when you put it in the oven could you use this straight away yes you could but you wouldn't have a nice tart tin it would have, you would have lost its sides its side would have disappeared because remember it wants to return to its original size so you're doing this chilling. So when we roll it out and we line the tart in, we'll chill again so that it, it lets it know that that's where it's got to stay. Okay, see you when we make the fill in. Right, hi, back again to make the fill in. So I've already lined and chilled I put it in the freezer actually, the pastry case, once it's lined and cut the edge off and put it in the freezer till you're ready to use it. 
and it can go in the oven straight from, from frozen. Right, now, I'm going to put that to one side. Easy filling, very easy filling. We're going to use, depending on the size of, of the tin you're going to use, I'm going to use three eggs. Now, a good set for a, for a custard, a soft set, is about three eggs to a pint of liquid, whether that be pint of cream, pint of milk, pint of what we're going to use here, combination. So I'm going to use, possibly going to use four eggs because they're quite small. I got the, I go to a free range farm for my eggs and they had some little pullets and I can't resist little pullet eggs. Right, so we've got the eggs in, I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt, but not much because in here, we're going to put tomato and basil sauce. It's the actual fair trade um, pasta sauce. Now, this is absolutely delicious. They do a whole range of them and they do do a chilli one, but because we've got the chilli pesto in the pastry, I just thought the tomato and basil would be a little bit more gentle. In. So I'm going to add this in, there, Remember, so I'm whisking them two together and then I'm going to go in with some double cream. This, if you really are a bit more health conscious, this could be milk, however this is one of the, um, the creams that has got vegetable fat in as well, so it's not all Double. But the thing is, once again, like I say, the ratio of what you're having to the amount of fat contained is, is very minimal and you've got the most beautiful combination of flavours, so I would let yourself go because it's a main meal. It's a lovely tart. I'm making it round. Sometimes if it was for a dinner party, I would maybe use this case because I think this has a nice look when you can do it in bars or fingers but round is nice as you can see from me round is nice now here we've got this most beautiful piece of smoked havoc okay once again up to you you can cook it pre-cook it or you can put it on raw it really doesn't matter so not easy so we'll put the Get that on there that immediately starts to cook the bottom i'm going to pour gently the mixture in to the tart case mm, there you delicious. go now the fish is just going to break in i am just going to use quite big chunks it's filling up beautiful lovely fish is this it's from a local smokehouse it's absolutely gorgeous and quite honestly I think we're there if I just slip that in the egg might not know it's gone there okay we won't quick tip open your oven door ready for your tray and then with a very steady 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 hand talking to yourself all the time tentatively Take it over and bob it in. And next time you see that, it'll be golden brown. So that's in at about 140 fan, 160 electric, gas mark three, just so that it just slowly, slowly cooks. Right, beer bread. I'm really excited and looking forward to making this. I mean, I've read the instructions, but first of all, can I just say I absolutely adore the little bag it comes in. This, this is a fabulous gift. This and the actual bottle of beer. I mean, what nicer present could it be than that? You know, wherever you are, wherever you live, maybe go for the local, go for a local brew. We've got a salt air brewery, which is worth knowing. And when I was shopping to get the bread, look what they produce, breadwinner. 
see it's all done it's all this is all very very well rehearsed anyway look at how you, you just open this bread slide open this little bit of string and open your beautiful bread nice so there we go tip the mixture into a bowl oh look and we've got the rosemary at the bottom there lovely hang on a minute beautiful gorgeous smell we'll just give that a little mix round and you do nothing more than add 350 mils of the beer i think we'll start with just under 300 maybe get that little bit of a soft i've also got a very good friend of mine that's doing the filming here today for me he's making me look as good as i possibly can and that's richard and he is begging for the other 150 mils that is, that's going to come out of this bottle so open we open we go and let's see it's got 350 mils in here oh oh there's something so gorgeous you know i was talking about the ice cream and that tropical beach well look at this golden this amber golden nectar oh richard i'm going to hand this over now to richard and if after this i start looking amazingly beautiful like a hollywood film star it's because he's found the other three bottles of this stuff that i've bought after this little sample so you're going to see an arm anytime now i'm going to come in and take this beer there now get back to work don't say I don't do anything for you. Cheers. <laughs> so, we're just going to slowly mix this in. Ooh. Mixing in nicely. Oh, looking good. Actually, this, this is... If you, if, you, if you want to make bread and you've, you've not actually thought how to do it try try one of these bread mixes and remember because it's fair trade and you are also in return getting some of the most excellent products and i'm not just saying that because i'm doing this here for jts but you're getting excellent quality and the products the, the sauces we've used today the jam and the ice cream are absolutely divine really and truly divine so i don't think there's actually any need to any need to need it see what i did there but i think it's also quite nice it's quite therapeutic needing bread have you have you a bit stressed or run down make a loaf and you'll find that the world's a better place What we've got now is the simplest and most delicious little salsa you could ever wish. My cameraman taught me this one. So, you know, after he's had all this beer, he's now telling me how to make the salsa. So basically, I've, I've, you didn't want to stand and watch me chopping veg. So I've got a nice big decorative salad bowl. I've got some eating apple chopped finely. I've kept the skin on just because it's, it's that's it's just a nice colour. So in goes the eating apple. If you are sort of waiting to chop everything, just sprinkle a bit of the red wine vinegar over the eating apple and it stops it, prevents it from going brown. A nicely fine diced red onion. Keep everything a similar size. That's that's the beauty of a of a salsa. When you're whatever you're using stays the same size, it's it's nicest. Then celery once again a finely chopped prawns of celery now give this a good stir you could i think we'll put a twist of black pepper in there and then what we're going to do is once we've these are fair trade fair trade victorian fault rainbow peppercorns come with a little grinder on top lovely so a nice twist i'm a bit of a black pepper fiend really so a good twist of black pepper then we've got some red wine vinegar now we'll put on about two or three capsules remember that you're balancing flavors 
you're not overpowering with any one flavour. So keep it, keep everything down to just enough and let that stir that through. That smells gorgeous. Now, can I just show you in that bowl there? That looks absolutely delightful. I'm just going to put another cap of the vinegar in because just to get that dressing just coating round and what we'll do now is cover that with cling film and bob it in the fridge to just marinate so this can be made anything preferably an hour two hours before you need you want to eat it just to, to let those flavors amalgamate and become really together okay Next thing we're going to do is we're going to fry the chicken that goes with this salsa. And now for that gorgeous little starter of the chicken. Chicken in the hot sauce. We've got the strips and then cut them down into fingers. Keep, once again, not, not too thin because you either just become very tough hard little goujons so there we go simple as that put the chicken into a bowl and then here we've got the Malawi gold hot chilli sauce and I'm going to pour give it a good shake get it all mixed up all those flavours I'm going to pour some over with it, the addition of a little bit of oil just to give it for that cooking and it's good to oil your meat rather than oil the pan and then some of the hot sauce sprinkled over like we're going to do now is we're going to go straight over and quickly fry them till they've just turned golden so join me at the cooker Okay, so here we are. I'm going to just wriggle the chicken very quickly. Just put it on. You put the oil on the chicken and we're just going to let, tumble it onto the hot plate. Right. You could even barbecue if you put, um, you could put a griddle on, onto a barbecue. You don't have to let them cook for long, so just Turn them over, they'll soon brown. And we'll just turn them over in the cooking all the way through. Next time you see us, we're going to have everything laid out on the table for you to see the whole of today's cooking events all ready for you. So come back shortly and we'll be there waiting with all the goods. So here we are, thanks to the products sent to myself by JTS, we've created the most amazing adventure. Fried chicken in Malawi gold hot chilli sauce, served with an apple and celery salsa and the gorgeous beer bread, made with a little less liquid to form a nice boule. Onto the mains, a smoked haddock, Tomato in tomato and basil sauce in a chilli pesto pastry. Delicious. Green salad and new boiled potatoes. And on to the dessert. A fresh raspberry and white chocolate chickpea brownie with coconut and pineapple ice cream. To share with everybody, even people who are gluten free. So there we have it. Not only have you created a delicious meal, but you've worked with organisations who value fair trade and helping farmers in less economic developed countries to provide excellent quality. Thank you very much for watching and it's been my pleasure and I look forward to seeing your results and speaking to you all again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.